This is the third episode of Rachit Challenges Gaurav. Let's see what happens. Today I will be challenging Gaurav with a problem on wine bottles. There is a king who loves to drink wine and he has 1000 wine bottles. But exactly one of them has been poisoned. And now the king wants to find out that what is that bottle which is poisoned. So the way he is going to do that is he is going to use rats as props in this and he will make those rats drink those wine bottles and based on what rat dies he is going to find out what is that particular wine bottle which is poisoned. Now the tricky part over here is he wants to find this poisoned bottle as soon as possible and catching rats takes time. So let's see if Gaurav can help the king find the poisoned bottle. 1000 wine bottles how does a man drink all that well if there's 1000 bottles and just one of them is poisoned one obvious solution would be for them to risk it and have a one by 1000 possibility of dying well we want to reduce the number of rats we need to catch so for 1000 bottles one smart way to do it would be to have 999 rats each rat will drink one bottle, so that is rat R1 drinks bottle B1, rat R2 drinks bottle B2, and so on and so forth. R999 drinks B999. Whichever rat dies amongst these is the rat corresponding to the bottle poisoned. There's one catch though, if none of the rats die, then we know that the last bottle, which is bottle number 1000, is the poisoned bottle. So in this way, we just need to catch 999 rats and that's not something that we want to do. How can we reduce this factor? Well, let's start thinking about probabilities. What if I catch just 500 rats and make them drink bottles B1, B2, B2, B3 or rather B3, B4 and you're taking pairs of bottles and you're making the rats drink them. In this way, you'll get up to B999 and B1000 being drunk by the 500th rat. Whichever rat dies is narrowing the possibilities down to just two bottles. And over here you can start getting an idea of what's happening. Uh, if I reduce this number further to 250, the, the bottle number, uh, the range of bottles which might be poisoned increases, but we have literally halved the number of rats we need for this. But this is not what we want. We need a concrete answer. And if there was some sort of concurrency allowed, if we would run rats in parallel, you know, catch one rat, feed them, and then uh, catch a rat while the poison is taking effect, this would have worked. This would be nice. We would just need, uh, there are two bottles here. So this would require maybe one rat. It would drink one bottle and leave the other one, and then you could find out if it is poisoned. But we can't do that. So what we need to do is we need to feed the rats at the same time. We need to feed the wine at the same time. Uh, this brings to the point that if somehow, magically, we had an extra rat which had drunk just this bottle, then we could make the conclusion that based on the death of this rat, if the extra rat dies, then this bottle is poisoned. If it doesn't die, then definitely this bottle is poisoned. To find the minimum number of rats, we probably need to find a pattern. Let's start with the minimum number of rats we can catch, which is zero, but that doesn't help, so we'll go for one. One rat. You make it either drink a bottle or not drink a bottle. So uh, let's take the first bottle and if I make it drink the bottle and it dies, then I know that the first bottle is poisoned. If it doesn't die, then I know that the first bottle is not poisoned. Good. So I can increase the number of bottles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make it drink the first bottle. I'll just make it drink the second bottle. And with this, we can still find which bottle is poisoned because if the rat dies, then B2 is poisoned. If the rat doesn't die, then B1 is poisoned. All right, now let's add another bottle. Here's the problem. If the rat, I mean, if I make it drink the, uh, the third bottle too, if the rat does die, then I don't know which bottle is poisoned amongst B2 and B3. Uh, if I don't make it drink the bottle and the rat doesn't die, then I am not sure whether B1 or B3 is poisoned. So here I need another rat, R1, R2. Over here, what I need to do is if I don't make R1 drink the third bottle, then this rat must drink that bottle. Okay. So right now we have some answer for three bottles. 
I'm going to add another one and make R1 drink this bottle. So that's going to be one. Again, there is some ambiguity as to uh, which bottle is poisoned if R1 dies. So I need to remove that ambiguity using R2. And I can make R2 drink the bottle B4. Uh, with this, what happens is if R1 dies, then the ambiguity is removed by R2. If R2 also dies, then it's okay. Uh, then we know that B4 is poisoned. But R2 has actually not drunk these two bottles. So these two were always zero. Uh, and that means that if only R1 dies, then B2 is the poison bottle. If R2 and R1 have both died, then we know that B4 is a poison bottle. Now what is this? If I write it in a different way, if I bring these numbers down as columns, what I'm getting is 0, 0 as the first column, 0, 1 as the second column, uh, 1, 0 as the third column, and 1, 1 as the fourth column. What's going on over here is binary counting. I'm just adding 1 to every binary number. What's going to happen with B5 now is that there will be ambiguity. These numbers are not distinct for B5. So I'll need another rat for B5 up to B8. Uh, the reason for that is because binary counting goes that way. For three digits, you can count up to the number 8. Uh, and because of these distinct combinations being, at the end of the day, binary numbers, what's going to happen is the original question has 1,000 bottles. I need a combination, a distinct combination, such that I can identify one bottle amongst 1,000. So one bottle amongst four took two rats, one bottle amongst eight will take three rats, and one bottle amongst 1,000 will require, so um, let's just write that down. Number of rats, if there are two, gives you four bottles at most to be tested. Three rats gives you eight bottles at most to be tested. And the obvious one which we had done first, which is uh, one rat gives you two bottles to be tested. So you can see that there's, it's just multiplying itself by two. So two raised to the power, number of rats, which is R, is going to be 1000. It's either equal to or greater. I mean, you can always test more bottles. That's always nice. So you have R coming out to be 10. 2 raised to the power 10 is 1024, which is greater than 1000. So with 10 rats, as long as you have some nice catches, you should be able to save the king. Hey guys, this is me Rachad. Welcome to yet another video. Today I will be challenging Gaurav with uh... One obvious way is to just make the king drink all the bottles, <laughs> in which case they'll die. But yeah, if he's such a big drunkard, then you never know what they deserve. I just want to reach out to Gaurav and just tell him what I learned from this video. He is least interested in the likes of rats. And I think rats are also animals. Rats are also having life. And save the rats. Thanks so much to Suhail Vemu, who's the first channel member that we have. It's people like him that make these videos possible. Thank you so much. It's our first collaboration. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the problem was fun to solve. And if you want more such videos, please subscribe and share this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.